What is going on, you two people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics. Here today, a little afternoon video drop. Doing this a little different today. Um, I saw on Twitter yesterday that the Card Talk Pod guys, uh, Ryan, Tyler, and Lou, were going to have Nat Turner on a special podcast episode dropping today. I just assumed I would want to talk about some things that came out of that podcast, and lo and behold, here we are. So today, uh, we're going to go ahead and chit-chat about some of the interesting things to come out of the PSA, or the Nat Turner interview uh, from the Card Talk Pod. So, I would encourage you, if you haven't yet, uh, I just assume everyone listens to Card Talk, maybe I'm wrong on that, but 100% go check this out on Card Talk to listen to the full interview I am not going to touch on absolutely everything. I, I just wrote down some highlights that I wanted to hit on. Um, but there were some good like personal stories and stuff about some of the things that Nat collects, that sort of stuff. Very interesting. And and then just, you know, you should always listen to this stuff yourself. But uh, I just want to touch on a few of the key takeaways. So like, comment, subscribe. That's what we are going to dive into this afternoon. First up, uh, one of the big things, and we're going to kind of tie a few of these points together. One uh, he talked about the fact that they're grading 40K cards a day. Now, the numbers don't reflect 40K a day, not all the time anyway. You know, I wonder, you know, we're only seeing what gets added to the pop report. I doubt they're rejecting 10,000 cards a day or anything crazy like that, but I feel like they're overestimating that number a little bit. But regardless, they are close-ish to 40K a day. Uh, a couple of the interesting things there was he talked about that they want to, or they are, they are opening a Jersey office, a large Jersey office, New Jersey office, uh, and also one in Europe. And as part of that, his goal, he stated this towards the end of the podcast, his goal is to double capacity by next year. By the end of this time next year, they want to be grading close to 80K cards a day. 80,000 cards a day is what they want to be grading this time next year, by the end of next year. Uh, that's a lot of cards. You know, so let's assume that that's really like sixty to 70,000 cards a day, just based off of they're not quite at 40K yet. We'll give them a little bit of a pass on that one, I guess. But 80K is a big deal. And this is going to lead, lead us down a path of, you know, I've talked about this before. I firmly believed when that said prior that cheaper prices were coming back. And he talks about that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff regarding pricing that he mentioned as well. And once again, I'm curious for all your thoughts and comments on this topic based off of, uh, you know, my thoughts. And then also, once again, I would, you should listen to the podcast yourself. Um, but, uh, you know, this whole time I've been thinking that they want to, they want to dominate the marketplace. If there is a card, they want it in their slab. And I think it might take another year or so, but they are going to get to that point. And I don't know what that means for a lot of these other grading companies. I think there are too many out there. Uh, a lot of these pop-up grading companies are not going to survive once PSA has lower pricing tiers. Uh, I think there's enough room for a couple. Uh, I think BGS is in big trouble. I have said that for a while. Uh, I continue to say that. They're com I need to dive in and do research on this, but I feel like their comps are getting worse and worse on BGS cards uh, and liquidity. Uh, SGC to me is firmly number two. BGS to me is three. CSG is four. And then there is everybody else. Some of those real grading companies, some of those fake grading companies. Some of those we try not to talk about on the channel anymore. But I don't know, you know, can those four remain if PSA is, you know, the joke I've always made is a fully operational Death Star. Yeah, I think so. But I think BGS is really going to feel the squeeze here. Um, and I think CSG is going to hang around just based off the name, the capital, and the Fanatics ties or the rumor of fanatics ties so they're always going to be kind of hanging around but i think they'll be a distant fourth you know maybe bgs gets to the point where they can you know they're still a niche grading company and they're not completely overwhelmed with demand and maybe that's okay 
And then I think SGC will still be viable for some stuff, or at least people will still want to use SGC. I think SGC will turn into the, I don't like PSAs and I'm going to use somebody else no matter what, when the lower levels open back up again. So but 80 car, 80,000 cards a day is a lot. And to grade that many cards a day, you have to be priced, you know, to be able to accept that many cards at a time. Um, and they did talk about like he he said he stated in the interview I want ten dollars per card back for the set registry stuff. He gets it. He does not want to lose out on set registry stuff. Now some interesting things that he threw out there regarding pricing, uh, and I never really even thought about this before. But he said like if you are, they want to tie the set registry system to the submissions um, system. And what that would essentially mean is if you are actively working on a set on your set registry and you're submitting cards for that set completion, you would get a lower rate, like a $10 per card rate. Now, I don't know what the turnaround time would be on that, but uh, that is a very interesting way to do that. I never even really thought about that, that, that that's, you know, to, to be able to give your people that want to use PSA set registry, the price break that they deserve, you know, have them show that, Hey, you know, I have, I'm working on a PSA set registry set. Can I get the discounted rate on this? And I think that's a brilliant way to do it. I think it's an absolutely brilliant way to do it. The other thing that they talked about was, you know, capacity and demand and, and kind of balancing those two mistresses. And he talked about which once again, this was kind of interesting that they don't want to do a full on queue system, but he floated the idea and he said they're working on it. It's not hundred percent yet where say they'll do $20 a card, but they have 50,000 spots for the month of December that they can grade at $20 a card. So there will be a system that you can get an allocation of that 50,000 cards. He said what they're working through now is what that looks like, how to crack down on botting, how to make sure it's fair, how to make sure everyone has a chance to get cards in at those levels. And I thought that was a, an interesting way to kind of balance. You could still submit, you know, if you want to submit, I don't know, let's call it express at $150 a card uh, anytime you want, you can. And every once in a while, we'll roll out these price breaks. It almost sounds like it's kind of going to be like a super advanced version of the old quarterly specials. Now, he didn't say that this was tied to any sort of membership thing or anything like that, but I could absolutely see that. You know, maybe if you're a PSA member, you get X percentage of or, you know, five submissions at the $20 level per month or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how group breakers would be mixed into that. He did not. They did not talk about group breaks or not group breakers. I'm sorry group submissions um, at all. Also had an interesting discussion during the podcast about AI grading. Uh, and he said that AI grading will never be the full blown go to. It should be used as an assist. Um, he made a good analogy about comparing it to spell check. Like AI is never going to write the article for you, but it can sure make your life a lot easier while you're writing it you know, spell check, grammar check, and that sort of stuff. And I thought that was a, a good way to kind of compare those two things. Uh, their new president, you know, is the guy, I forget the guy's name off the top of my head, uh, but it's the guy, Steve Sloan stepped down. Uh, the new guy that was in charge of Genement is now the president of PSA. So I think tech's going to be a big factor. And he said what it's really good, which I found this extremely interesting. I don't think he was trying to throw shade, but... Uh, he said where the AI makes a massive difference is catching fake cards. He said they could program the AI to look for certain things uh, on known fakes and it'll flag them as fake to save the graders time uh, from having to like dig in and do all the research on it. I find that I just find that funny when the company that touts AI grading is grading massive fakes left and right. So I, I just found that interesting. I thought that was funny that he, he cited that the AI could help them catch fakes. Um, but I guess it must just depend on your AI. Uh, what else did they talk about? They talked about variable pricing, uh, which I, I don't think that's that crazy of a thing. You know, price could fluctuate depending on 
demand. And he said they will not. He's, he did say what was the not far away from being open. Uh, and he cited the $10 thing. He said not this year and not Q1 next year. And then he's kind of stopped at that. Uh, but I continue to say, I think we see regular service any day. Uh, I think regular service comes back at any day. Express service is flying. And he said their their rate that they are growing capacity is faster than their current demand level is. Uh, he said they continue to hire 10 to 12 people a week, most of that being graders, and that they are growing capacity faster than current demand, which makes sense because there's not that many levels open. Um, but I really do think we see regular service. I think it's going to be real soon here. I really do. I don't know what it's going to be priced at. I th- I still say it starts at 100 and ends up at 75. Uh, and then it's going to go from there. And then economy will be next, maybe sometime early next year. One of the crazier things he threw out was in regards to the number of cards that they were getting um, in relation to the capacity demand discussion. From January 1st until they closed, they were receiving 100,000 cards a day. 100K cards a day for three straight months, almost four straight months. I forget the day that they actually closed. And then he said in one day, their record was 600,000 cards. I'm guessing that's right before the price hike. Uh, and he did mention in hindsight, he wished he raised prices sooner, but they didn't want to do it because it, basically they needed to do it. He, he realized that they should have did it the second that they took over, but they didn't want to do that because of the optics essentially and waited a little bit. And he said in hindsight, that was probably a mistake. So uh, to me, just kind of marinating on this stuff, uh, you know, to circle back kind of what we talked about towards the beginning of this video. Uh, I do think a lot of the smaller companies are toast once they fully open back up again. If you want to grade 80,000 cards a day, if you have the ability to grade 80,000 cards a day, and let's say that happens next year, and they are still the, let's assume that they are still on top when it comes to comps and liquidity. I get that people might not like the slab, might not like the company, but there is a certain segment of people that are grading to flip and move. And they are going to gravitate towards the one that sells for the most and sells the easiest. And as long as that trend continues, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, especially if lower tiers start coming back. Because, you know, every time they open up a pricing tier, lower a price, it pulls some cards away from the other grading companies. I mean, I know people that are like, oh, okay, cool. I'm sending this to PSA now because $150 Express is open instead of $300. Or I am, you know, I had this stuff. I was about to send to SGC or whoever. Uh, I'm going to move it to the side and hang on to it because I think regular service is going to open up pretty soon. So that's going to affect the levels of those other companies. Uh, and I'll be curious to see how all that shakes out. Uh, that was my big takeaway is just like kind of spinning this thing forward. This was not stuff that they said in the interview. This is just me, you know, just kind of reading the room. Um, I These small time grading companies, I think their number of submissions is greatly going to decrease um, over this next year as PSA continues to open up more and more levels. That's just my gut feel tells me that I, I just don't see a lot of these. I just think there's too many right now. Uh, And a lot of people will try them and then get burned on the resale value of what some of this stuff goes for and then go, ah, well, I could just, you know, for an extra 20 bucks, I could just go PSA and I'm going to get the the value out of it. So, um, but once again, very, very interesting discussion. It was about 40 minutes long. Once again, please go check it out on the Card Talk pod. Once again, I assume most of my audience listens to that podcast, but if you don't, uh, go check it out. Ryan, Tyler, and Lou are all really good. Uh, I don't know any of them personally. Uh, I've met all of them all extremely briefly. They probably would not know who I am, um, but Ryan might just because he see me in shop, but I've never had a long conversation with Ryan because he's always so busy. Um, 100% go check it out. And if you're not subscribed to their podcast, you should be. Uh, but yeah, once again, curious for your guys and girls' thoughts on all this and kind of what was said and, 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 you know, where are you at with them? So, but yeah, that's all I got. Like, comment, sub, catch guys and girls on the next one. Peace.